All right, I want to learn just something super basic. Give me. Hey, what's up? This is Corey Wong. I am the guitar player of the band Wolfpack and a very amateur disc golf player. And I am here with amateur musicians <laughs> Not and very professional <laughs> disc golfers. Here with Nate, Paige, Simon, JC, James, you know him, and Germ, who's going to be hosting. We're here at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. Beautiful course. We're going to hang out today, play some disc golf, I am hopefully going to take a couple tips from these guys. Then we're going to go to my studio. Maybe I'll teach Simon a thing or two on the guitar. Yes, I can't and, wait. And uh, we're going to have a fun time. So thanks for hanging with us. See you out there. What do you like, Corey? You like forehand? You like backhand? I am left-handed. Sweet. Nice. All I got is a backhand. I like that. James Conrad, Paige Pierce. Most lefty runner. backhands have a righty forehand just to make sure that I do both rights Whoa. covered. Yeah. <laughs> you do. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I think it's because of batting position. So Did I you play like baseball? Like this. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But you, oh, you play hey, right handed guitar, right? Courtesy of MVP. We, we heard you threw some MVP discs. Oh, so little, bro. Box. Nice. Yeah. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Is it the new stamp? Yeah, he's got the yeah. new stamp. Oh, no that way. Looks Yellow familiar. and blue. Uh -huh. That's cool. Got the Envy. The special edition. Yeah. Dude. Those go in. Thank you, bro. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. That's oh, it. Yeah. That's it. In the middle. Heiser. What a shot. That's it. Nice, nice All right. All right. Yeah. All, right. All, right. All right. There we go. Paige with the buzz. Okay. Pace it. Okay. Pace it. She's out of the Let's car. Go. How do you wow. throw it that straight? Let's go. <laughs> How did you get through there? This is my new disc, Passion. Just came out a couple Sick. days ago. Oh, can I feel that? Oh. Go, Dirk. Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, first shot. All right. Nice. I don't want to throw any. Yeah, I don't want to throw either. Didn't even go in. No. Okay, thanks, Simon. Thank you. Now we can all. Taking relax. the pressure off me and Nate. <laughs> we can all relax. That's a now. lot easier for Nate to do that shot. That's a putt. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh a little hot, a little hot. This is a freaking sweet starting hole. This is hole. a great hole. I wonder what it looks like on the green. Uh oh. Can I throw this? Yeah, Today? absolutely. All right. Dead straight. Ooh, the passion. Yeah, you keep the it. Passion. Keep it. Thank you. Yeah. Whoa, that's a gift. Wow. You guys are coming. I did not come prepared. Hey, what's up? Now we're in the studio. This is my turf. And since the disc golf pros made me throw first off the tee, I'm going to make Simon go first. You're kidding. Let's go, Simon. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I might shank this straight in the tree. I was really into blues when I started. Yeah. I've actually never played what you really play, the funky jam jazz yeah. stuff. Um, so I have no experience with that. But uh, the blues was... Yeah. I can't play with a pick. I think you can. Yeah, yeah Simon. Come yeah, on. Thank you. That was not shanked into the first tree. That was there we go. I like that. Right down the fairway. I feel like one of my strings is out of tune. Is that right? You're a little out of tune. Yeah. I stepped up to the plate. You obviously know I don't throw very fast. You said put the driver down. Yeah. Is that just like the most common? Oh, absolutely. When am I allowed to start throwing a driver? <laughs> when you when you learn how to throw a mid-range straight and a putter straight, I mean, you can start throwing a driver as soon as you want. You just probably aren't going to throw it very far or accurate. Everyone thinks that the, the higher speed discs, you know, I want to go far, but you actually don't go as far if you don't get the disc going straight. Because you can throw the putter or mid-range straighter and more accurate and more consistent. Just as far. And once you, yeah. Most really? beginners, 
throw almost further with a more glidey mid-range than a, a high-speed driver. Actually, a lot of beginner guitars are harder to play at first. They have higher action. And yeah, higher like action that. or like intonation is a little harder to keep together. Okay. It's, it's just not as tight of a build. What kind of early mistakes do musicians have? I think it would be a playing thing, an approach thing, like trying yeah. to do, trying to do too much. Yeah when you don't have some of the foundational things. Like, right. like if somebody's trying to do sweet picking on the guitar their first week, it's kind of like no point. Like right. that's not really, <laughs> it's not really gonna do anything for you. Well, there's a little bit of advice. Look at you, you're in the yeah. middle now. How about that? I'd still rather have my, my shot than Simon's. <laughs> <laughs> One good shot and he's gonna throw out this for the rest of the round. Look at that. <laughs> Actually, that's great. Go in. Oh my Jeez. God. Nice. Yeah, yeah. let's go. For you. Yes, dude, Come that on. was sick. Yeah, Paige. Yeah, nice, Paige. Fresh out the car. Got the burst. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, JC. Yeah, wow, guys, you guys are. All right, James. What do I do? Do I rock the Adam or the Envy? Too good. You're used to the Adam, so that makes sense there. The Envy will be pretty overstable, brand new. Um, the Nomad's super straight. You could give it a try, though. Oh, the Nomad. Yeah. Yeah, that's what James is putting with the Nomad. Yeah. You call right. it Nomads? Mm -hmm. Always plug. That's good to know. I, I just assumed he was putting with the Envy. Really? I don't know. Yeah! What? Yeah! Outside the circle. That's yes. That was awesome. You just yes! got the same score as everyone besides Paige Simon's Pierce. Actually, you beat blown. Perkins. This one. So on the first time trying a guitar, am I going to be able to match what you do? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Yes. It seems like we will shoot the same set. score on a, on the same guitar. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> because a lot of what I do is instrumental music. I think about writing in the sense of kind of scoring for film or scoring for a landscape. That's part of why I like disc golf so much. So I could look down this fairway and I see a small straight path. I've got six very clear trees on that. I've got these trees here. There's these things coming out here. Like I'll try to visualize a melodic phrase oh, with what, cool. I'm, what I'm seeing in the landscape. Or, you know, that's if I'm so looking sick. out here, yeah, so you know, cool. I see a bed of water hiding behind all this stuff in the foreground. So I'll kind of use that as a, an inspiration for a production move where it's like, yeah. there's a bed of something out there, a bed of water. How can I make that sonically? And then all this other stuff here, you know? So it's, that to me is the ideal thing where I can really kind of see something, spend some time in there uninterrupted and then kind of internalize it and, and put it into something. Whoa. I think it's cool to think that when you're in New York City playing at Madison Square Garden in front of tens of thousands of fans, that it all started. Oh yeah. Somewhere completely juxtaposed, as different a venue is where it all began to take it to the cities. Cause I'm guessing you're mostly playing in big cities across the country, right? Yeah. Oh, Perkins. Oh, Perkins. Oh, oh so close. That, so good. You're kidding. That was like so close. This, this is an incredibly James Conley, Conrad friendly tee pad. This is sick. I, I don't want to use all of it, but I feel like it, it was built, so I have to. Oh, that's a good kick. He shouldn't have to start off with it. Look how many steps there are. <laughs> no, I just. Could do I had to utilize twice. it because it's there. I mean, they took the time to build it. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh! Wow, that ranch that twice. It's looking so good. Everybody hit a tree? I think so. Uh, yeah, everyone did. Doors watching. I will say, speaking of these long, these long tee pads, I was watching one of your videos, Simon. You were out in the middle of the field. You're saying, as far as a run-up goes, nobody runs up. They just walk up. And then the next video is like a Jomez video where I see James like, <laughs> <laughs> like tearing up to me. I'm like, oh, come on, man, that what's it, with the mixed message? Here? It is a gallop for sure. Yeah. Yes. Just keep throwing that blue one. Wow. Okay. Let's go, Corey. Right. That was a bunch. Normally when I make an album, I spend months writing, months planning, recording, and then, you know, sometimes we'll go in the studio for a couple weeks or something, or spend four days in the studio a month off, four days in the studio a month off, or whatever, you know, a bunch of... For this album, what was actually really interesting is John Batiste and I became close friends kind of out of happenstance, and he's the band leader on The Late Show with Colbert. 
And so he invited me to start playing on the show a bunch with them. So we would just sit around piano and guitar, playing through tunes. And it was like, oh, that's really cool. Let's, let's record this as a voice memo. So we'd record a voice memo. And then I would go home, and then we'd just start sending each other text messages of voice memos of like, hey, this would be cool to play together. We found a couple friends to record with us, and we had these six ideas. They're all just like these jumping points of, of melodic ideas. Like the one was just... But that was like, all right, here's this melodic idea, and then we'll just have it as a jumping point into something, and then we'll come back to it at the end. And what ended up, ha ended up happening is we just went in to kind of just sound check. We went in there, started playing, and 36 minutes later, the album was done. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and it, it was just one of those things where John would sometimes lead the thing, sometimes I would lead it. You're hearing the instincts of Nate on the drums following, and then, okay, all of a sudden he's using this amount of momentum. That's where he thinks we're going, so that's where we're going. Okay, now I'm going to bring us somewhere. And then, you know, it was a really interesting pursuit because we did it, and then it was like, okay, cool, that was fun. Like, that was amazing. I, I don't know what we're going to do with it. I don't know if we'll actually even release it. Then COVID hit. And I was opening up my computer. It's like, I saw the session on my hard drive. I was like, oh my gosh, I should go back and listen. Is it as cool as I remember it being that day? And I mixed the album in one day and I sent it to John and I was like, dude, check this out. Like, this turned out awesome. <laughs> He's like, we got to release it. It's very different than the music that I normally do. It's very different from the music he normally does. But that was the one that got us our Grammy nominations. And wow. you know, it was- That's amazing. Like there's no way for me to describe the album without feeling like I'm being cheesy. Like it's like a meditations, but it's like jazz meditations. Like if somebody told me they made a jazz meditations album, I'd be like, I'm not listening to it. That, that's, that's not something I'm interested in listening to. What we do that's different than most bands is that we do like event weekends rather than doing an East Coast tour We'll play Madison Square Garden or something. Was a packed house at Madison yeah. Square Garden? Yeah, it was sold out. It was incredible. Oh, dude, you can watch the show online. It's sick. Wow. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it's sick. I almost skipped the Portland Open a couple of years ago to come see you guys and Krungbin at Red Rock. Oh, yeah. That was one of my favorite shows nice. ever. Damn. But it was 38 degrees out or something. We were all wearing snow suits. What? Whoa. It was freezing, but it was incredible. Does it, it mess, mess with your like dexterity at all? Your oh, fingers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. My hands were frozen. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's something very similar with disc golf. Like yeah, when it's, yeah, it's, when so it's below 40, like I can't throw the disc I at all. I can't putt at all. I can't <laughs> putt. I have no idea when. Yeah, I'm out. I'm Does so it change out. the disc response? Yes. Yeah. The, the 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 plastic doesn't like have as much give. It stiffens up, and so it, it they can fly different, and yeah. you just can't get the same same grip really. Same grip. It's yeah. really just that. Or like confidence. the commitment too, because it it hurts when you like oh, really? actually like rip it. Oh my gosh. It's going in. Wow. Oh, so wow. Good. wow, dude. Nice. So far. All right. That's a good strategy to shank the first shot. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What? What? <laughs> so good. Why does something out of tune sound bad to us? Why does something in tune sound good? You're getting real deep, That's real deep. fast. That is deep. Well, are, you, are, are you? Are... Yeah, I think that most of us, when we think of something that's not good, it's a culmination of all the references of everything that we've heard in our life that we've either had some sort of emotional response to. So it's learn, learn. Yeah, I think yeah. so. But I think to some degree, there's also an order to things. If you were to analyze a waveform of just one note, it's, it's gonna show up a certain way. And if you play a certain interval, a fifth, when you analyze those two waveforms together, it's gonna actually show a geometric shape that's pleasing and looks like it has order to it. So scientifically, there are certain intervals that have, they, they, they have a visual order to them. So something tells me there is some sense of order that we associate with, where if I played that fifth a little out of tune, 
it's, it's not going to show up with as much order. So the things that we, we connect with, these sort of intervals. There's a certain amount of scientific order with those waveforms that work together, which would suggest to me that there actually is something. It's mathematic. Yeah, there's something mathematic. It is not just learn. Yeah, it's absolutely. Now, that being, I think humans crave order too. Even like we try to like go yeah. off the beaten path and it's nice, but you kind of crave it a little bit. Like you need that. Yeah, absolutely. Like a stability. I think at the same time, there is a lot of music that needs some disruption in the order to bring a level of human element. It creates like tension mm. too and interest. That yeah. Like, and then you can you know, bring it all the way back around and make it whole again. Yeah. Make it like yeah. stable. Absolutely. And so much of music is tension and release. So if I were to play, if I were to just go. You know, like that note really wants to resolve right there. You know, and, and whether that's a learned thing or whether that's something that really is mathematic, I, d I don't know, but there is harmonic tension. There's harmonic tension and release. It seems universal. Mm -hmm. It seems like instinctive to, I don't know. I mean, I think that, you know, when you play a note that's in tune, it's just like, how could anyone not recognize that as just like soothing? <laughs> sure. You know, I think that that's like the same thing when I see like shapes and the way that I break down what I'm, visualizing as beautiful, you know, in art. Yeah. Same goes in music. What do people get wrong about the disc golf community? <laughs> like there's a nothing. there's a certain nothing. They're all right about everything. <laughs> there's a certain perception and there is a certain reality yeah. of disc golf community. There are and, and I feel like there's probably a few classifications of, of players who play disc golf. But what is it that people get wrong about the sport and the community in general. People are always like, did you play this course, this course, this course, this course, and this course? And we're like, no, we only had three days to play like two courses for the, the, the tournament, for the yeah. championship, you know? And our main drive isn't to go and play every course in the city, but every local community just is like, I want to show you this course, I want to show you this one. And we're like, right. uh, we're, we're like on a, Unfortunately, we have to play just this one course. And right. when we're not doing that, we want to chill and do something else with our time besides just like play every course. And so some people are like a little bummed by that. Like yeah. we'll get 50 messages yeah. saying like, go play this course, this go course play this is course. Awesome. We'll, I'll show you around this one or yeah. this yeah. and that. And like during the week of a tournament, we yeah. never play anything. Maybe never. we maybe bring putters out if we're staying at a course or something. And yeah. yeah practice some putting or whatever. They play catch. But, yeah. Like I see a lot of pop culture make uh, bring disc golf into whatever their, their comedy bits. Yeah. And they'll be like, disc golf, bruh. And they'll just think of it as a very like fratty sport or like yeah. a place where people just go drink or smoke or, but I'm not gonna say that that's a completely false identity for disc golf. That is a part of the culture yeah, in yeah. the very amateur, you know, recreational, like not tournament scene. Recreational, yeah. But like, I think once you start doing what we do and you see it from the inside and you look at the, the people that are coming up in the sport and you recognize the culture is shifting uh, to much more about athleticism and yeah. about people who take it serious for the sport and the love of the camaraderie of all of our friendships and the road travel and all the things that we do off the course, but then also like being very serious about the action of, of being very good at disc yeah. I, I don't mind that stuff sometimes, but like when it's like the clip of like Kevin Jones acing it on Maple Hill and stuff, yeah. when they make fun of those, it's like, that was a great yeah. throw. Like we yeah. aced it. You don't have to be sure. making fun of that and saying. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult for disc golf to get away from it because it, it really is truly a part of our culture. Yeah, but, that's what and, a lot of the recreational players and, like about it. And they make up the majority of disc golfers are that, but it's not just that. And yeah. it's, you know, we are, it's balanced. Yeah. And it may be balanced heavily on that side, but it doesn't mean that that's all that disc golf is. So like when we, we try to like, you know, let it be known that, you know, it doesn't have to just be that. It's that and this. And I think that that's an important balance that we don't quite get enough credit for yet. Yeah. That's how well, you do it. What do you need? He thought he had to turn it over. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite there, but that was it's close. Sick. No, you're so there. That was dirty. Is it? All right. See, could I do that if I was just out here like, hey, what's going on, man? Let's go. Let's 
go passion. <laughs> you want to try playing this Stay in the bro. air. Look at that. Sick, Paige. Wow, Paige. Amazing. Yeah. Should I throw the passion? I just don't want to lose it in just the water. Like Paige I have about 50 more in there. Oh, that's water there? <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Sweet. There we go. Right. Both times that you threw that that disc, at least, when you throw, your arm just is stopping right here. Right here? Yeah, and you need to, like, finish the, extend the, yeah. the follow through. So that's... You know what I mean? It, yeah. like, stops all your forward progress, and it's just, like, that's why the disc never got to flat. It just stayed going that way. Okay. Because you're not popping it up to Watch see through. how his oh, arms yeah. all the way like i would think your shot's not finished until your right shoulder is in front of you now how far back should i go like if i'm reaching back this is too much right i personally think so i don't like my shoulders to get more than parallel but i know like when you're throwing distance shots yeah people are reaching that far back but you know on a hole like this you don't want to make your you want to limit like your error range so like the farther you reach back the harder it is to get back onto your line okay so like i don't like to reach back farther than this but the most important thing right now that i need to do is commit make sure that i commit yeah co finish the shot it's, it's like you threw at 80 percent of the shot throw another passion all right <laughs> gotta get a good one on video with the passion Jeez. <laughs> what? here play another stratocaster <laughs> i'll take one corey i'll show it to everyone i know <laughs> oh much more committed. better yeah. yeah you know when i start overthinking it then i i know yeah, yeah, it's tough there especially... be too, there's so many different facets that go into it yeah so where can people get your stratocaster like is it is it on Fender's website or you Fender sell them? Fender.com slash Corey Wong, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you don't sell them on your website or anything? Like no. That? So, I mean, you can get them at Guitar Center, okay. Sam Ash, any Sweet. of like the retailers. Stuff? So, a Stratocaster is a Stratocaster. Yeah, okay. Right? But there are certain things about it. Like, I developed uh, pickups with Seymour Duncan. We developed a different body shape for it that fits a little more my style of playing, the sustain and the attack, the transient, meaning the very first of the, yeah, yeah. Of the waveform. My, mine is actually very good for a beginner if you can afford okay. it. It's a $2,000 guitar. So oh, it's easy. Um, I play disc golf. Yeah, oh. yeah you're going. Climbed right out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Have you ever heard a bird like sing out of tune? Like they're always in tune, right? That's a fascinating like, would you, point. Would you say that a bird is in tune? Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought as much about that, but it's interesting to hear, you know, you hear birds in different ranges, like the guitar, the baritone guitar, the bass guitar. You hear birds that sing different intervals for different things. Humans are one of the few, one of the few creatures that lower their tone of voice to try and attract a mate. Bird, some birds do it, and a lot of frogs do it to try and sound like a... A more attractive frog and so if you hear a bunch of frogs calling together you'll start to hear them go lower and lower and lower and lower and try and get the whoa, mate and humans whoa. do that too that's fascinating to think about how we posture ourselves like in our voice you know it sounds cheesy to say but music is all around us you're very aware of it obviously by thinking about the way the birds are the way that the the wind through the through different types of trees, from an aspen tree to a pine tree, it's gonna be very different. I guess there's also posturing in disc golf, like, like James is throwing his putter when I'm trying to drive. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not, that's, not, that's not legitimate posturing. He's just like, I'm gonna weigh And the drive. ladies are <laughs> impressed. <laughs> I feel like there could be a, a slight element to that, you know? I, I don't think it's something I do on purpose. I don't, I'm not gonna intimidate them by throwing my putter, <laughs> yeah. but if some people might, might see me ready to throw with my putter and be like, maybe I should throw a putter. And, uh, you know, there's weird little mental games that go on, even if it's like almost at a subconscious level. So many subplots. Yeah, totally. That don't, that no I one don't can I don't practice about, with some you know, players like, because it's like an attack on my ego sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> for, for real, I can't practice with like eagle. It just, it doesn't benefit me because I don't learn anything from watching him try and play the course, you know. In what way? Well, because I can't get the disc up to speed like he can. 
or a lot of people can't. But if I just play with my friends or something and we're lifting each other up and I'm just in my own world, I can be as confident as I need to be to perform at my best, so. I just came off of what I would call a pretty bad performance from yeah. last week. Yeah. And it's like, because of me putting my life into it, because it means so much to me and because I've dedicated my entire adulthood to this thing, that I, my craft, yeah. when it doesn't go well, it, it, it amplifies the dissatisfaction of what I'm doing and I feel like it's worse than anything else could be. Yeah. I know that that's dramatic yeah, and it's I, not I true. It. Yeah. Do you relate to that? To me, the way that I've reconciled that is for many of us, like you're saying, this you've poured so much of your life into what you do. Right. There are these products with your name on it. Like I have a, a Fender Corey Wong signature Stratocaster now. Thank you. Nice. Humble brag. Yeah. Well, the the, <laughs> the thing about that is yeah. it's amazing, but I now have to be yeah. really good. You have to I can't earn have the Fender every days. time you yeah, go yeah. play. Part of that, when you have products with your name on it, when you are known for a specific thing, what can end up happening is you wrap your identity in that thing. Yeah. So for me, what I've done to reconcile that is that I actually tie my identity to something not performance-based. That's fantastic. I tie who I am into what I do yeah. and a certain message or whether it be a certain Dude, that, that hits home, man. Thing. That yeah. really, I honestly, like right now, the way I was feeling about disc golf just in the last couple of days, it's just been like mixed up with all the feelings that I have with the expectations that I have of myself. Yeah. Which shouldn't be real. I should just have goals and, and expectations kind of create this cloudiness that, you know, when I don't perform to those expectations, then it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're amazing at what you do and you make this amazing shot and now people are going to expect this of you. Oh, yeah. you're the guy that makes those shots. You're, you're the one that wins all the women's tournaments or whatever. And all of a sudden you have a couple bad weeks, yeah. you have a bad year. If your identity is completely wrapped in that, That'll you're, you're just, so it's but how, do, how yeah. do you not make that your identity when it's all you do? Literally, if, even on our off day, we're playing with you. Like, how do you do that? Uh, my interpretation of, of what you do is more than disc golf because so many of you, what I've seen, especially in what you do is, there's a lifestyle that you live with the van, and being an outdoors person, being an advocate for the outdoors, being an advocate for exercise, being an advocate for, for equality, yeah. being an advocate for some, some sort of sport that's different. Like I grew up as a skateboarder. Mm -hmm. What we do as our sport is illegal basically everywhere. Cause I didn't, we didn't have skate parks and stuff growing up. Okay. So now to see it in the Olympics, all of a sudden it kind of validates mm -hmm. part of, yeah. part of the whole thing. So it, my identity is not wrapped in being a guitar player, or being a skateboarder, it's, it's bringing joy to the people that are around me. There's so many other things. So for a disc golf player, I think it celebrates nature. It celebrates the outdoors, the lifestyle that you live. I say, oh, where you live, James? Right here. Right. In the, in the van with my uh -huh. face on it, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, so that's a lifestyle right thing. That's, yeah. that's something that's different. That, that's outside of competition. Yeah. Right? If you have so many more things than just the way that you perform disc golf, yeah. that will give you so much a stronger sense of self as it's well. It's about perspective. Oh, cheers yeah. to that, Corey. Another part of identity that I think about, there's a lot of players that I'll play with where I'm just like, there's no way that I'll ever be as technically proficient as this person. But then what I recognized is, you know, what I do with the paintbrush is different than what they do. What I do in music, I actually have my own musical identity and my own thing that I do that in some ways is actually, it can be more powerful. I mean, I, I am a technically proficient guitar player. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I have to be self-aware enough, to know, tough enough to know that. But uh, we've noticed. There are certain things that I can't do that actually help me form who I am on the instrument. I might not be able to throw the disc as fast or whatever. But you know what I can do? I can, I can weave around this line and that this person can't, you know, or something. You know, in music, there are certain ways that I do that where I've actually found my voice better because of just 
some something that yeah. I would maybe consider a limitation, you know. And when I'm playing on the same track as Joe Satriani, like Joe's one of the greatest guitar players of all time. What I recognize is the thing he brings to the table that is so compelling is in the lead guitar realm. All the fireworks, all of that, great, cool. What I bring to the table is in the rhythm guitar realm. And I can do things that are very compelling in the rhythm world that a lot of lead players can't, and vice versa. So what I'm curious about is in the disc golf world, if each of you have something that you feel like this is the thing that I bring to the table, this is my expertise, that I might not have some of these other things, but this is something I have that kind of nobody else does. When it comes to building a bag, what is the actual essentials? Well, I think like for starters, you need like a stable putter and understable putter, a stable mid-range, understable mid-range, all the way down. And then like, according to your type of play, like you said, you design the neck for yeah. your style of play. Like, then we'll fill in the gaps with like things we need. So like this, that one I let you throw earlier, the sole. Yeah. 90% of my teammates don't throw it, but it fits my style of game really well. Yeah, eight discs in your bag, you'd be off to a good start. That'd, yeah, that'd be and good. And it's not too many to start off with, and that's a problem that I think a lot of beginners get into is they get too many discs. Yeah. And it, it's hard and to like lock down of the specifics of, yeah. of it. Of an, yeah, you want to make sure that you really hammer home the flight characteristics of how you, how this disc reacts to your speed, to your style of throw. And then you can learn what things like she's saying, the utilities that you can add in later. Still, you want it, like for the first couple of years, I think keep it under 12. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to have like a 24, 25 disc and bag. It might vary a lot where you live. Like, you know, if you play a course like this that's wooded all the time, you don't you don't need to throw a, a Destroyer or a Nitro or yeah. a PD2 or... Yeah, like it's pretty common for us to like grab our bag and take like a handful out because we're playing on this course today. Yeah, like we I don't need all of our drivers. I don't need my Photon yeah. or my yeah. Nitro or yeah. anything like that on this course. When you're going to a gig or like when you're packing for tour, how many guitars yes. do you bring? Yes. Like you bring every guitar oh, you own? Oh, no. No. Not bad. How many do you own actually? Hello? I think I have... Oh. 36 guitars. Wow. <laughs> but that is um, for different jobs. Like I have yeah. my electric guitars, my acoustic guitars, my bass guitars, okay. baritone guitars. <laughs> With Wolfpack, there's no reason for me to play anything other than my Strat. Okay. So my Fender Stratocaster, that'll get me. Because you're just rhythm guitar on that one, right? Yeah, and I yeah. do a little bit of lead stuff, but I'm really only playing rhythm guitar. And oh my God. the only reason why I would bring a second <laughs> is a backup to have on stage in case I break a, a string. A string, yeah, because you can't fix it mid-set or whatever. I could, yeah. like I can, I can change a string really fast, <laughs> but I'd rather not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so I'll normally bring two guitars and just use one of them pretty much 100% of the time. Uh -huh. I just have one as a backup. But the thing that a lot of guitar players bring a ton of is pedals. With Wolfpack, I don't have a wide range of tones, so I have a really small pedal board that I have a suitcase where one half of it is my pedal board and the other half is my clothes. Okay. So when, I, when we tour with Wolfpack, I have a small suitcase, my backpack, and my guitar case. Okay. Just to keep it yeah. simple. Minimal, yeah. yeah. James and I are known as the backhand players. Like we don't really throw a sidearm hardly at all. And I think that the, you know, Simon, we all know we're like, oh, Simon, you got that shot right there up and up high. Like we know germs, like flexi sidearm, like touch sidearm. And like, we just know our fortes. And I think that's what you're saying too, is like, we rely on that. If there's ever a moment where you're feeling like that insecurity or whatever, you can just fall back on that one skill that you have and maybe it's more difficult, but to you it's not. And just like have confidence in that in that one like little riff or whatever. Yeah. You have to like step out of your comfort zone too, right? To be more well-rounded, to be versatile. Mm -hmm. And like for you to be the best version of Corey Wong and your style with your funk and the, 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 the greatness that you bring to our ears, to be as great as you can possibly be, you, want, you need to try all the other stuff too, right? Yeah. You want to at least experiment and see like, okay, this might, add not that much to what I do, but at the same time, knowing how to do it or playing with that, like, 
I'll look at a Simon line and say like, all right, I'm not going to do this in tournament, but <laughs> it's practice and I got to yeah, try yeah. it, yeah. you know? And like, just by trying it, I'm learning, you know? Yeah. And I'm also learning <laughs> probably just a sidearm, yeah. you know? Like I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. teaching myself, yeah, this is why I do this, you yeah. know? But like, in the same way, you're kind of validating what you're already good at. Explore, but at the same time, knowing yourself over time, identifying what your strengths are and going to those in those times when you need to is like that's the the comfort zone but also like that's why we are known for those things that's why simon's known for going over the top of things it's because it's worked out well for him. Let's go! What is Incredible! <laughs> Yay! Thank you. So how long have you been playing? So I, when I was in college, 2007, I uh, started playing okay. a fair amount. All right. And then like after I graduated, didn't really play a lot. And then when I started touring, a drummer friend of mine, Steve Gould, who's an incredible disc golf player, and he was, he's just such an advocate for the sport, he was like, all right, we play the gig, hang out at night, go to sleep on the bus. The bus drives at night. We wake up in the new city. Steve was on DG Course Review, Sweet. looking for like, you know, the best, best course close uh -huh. to us. Yeah, so we would go play all these courses. I probably played 300 courses because of being a touring musician. Oh my gosh. Like we were simultaneously doing Incredible. a disc golf tour while we were that's so cool. I love to hear that. Who do you play with when you're on the road? Like, just the band. They play. Yeah. Cool. Antoine too. I haven't played with Antoine. Yeah, see. Woo! Nice. Yeah, dude. Nice. Yeah, you said you were gonna try to get the guys into playing, right? Like, yeah. You're, like you have to be the drummer, dude, for the rest of the group. Now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to learn just something super basic, where you can like have fun on top of that. Oh, okay. Do you know an E9 chord? Nope, but I'll figure it out. Okay, so just get this motor moving, this. Okay, now. All right, now check this out. Now, to give it a little bit of phrasing, give me. It feels much more comfortable without a pig. That's okay. That's like funky. Yeah. yeah. That's funky. I like that. Is this your drive? Yeah. Are you putting? I am gonna. Simon throw it can in. kind of putt from here. This yeah. This is like just outside his normal. In the good old days. Yeah, the good old Simon <laughs> flippy P two. Don't say that. That breaks my heart. <laughs> you can have my elbow. Oh, get it there. I think you got it there, Simon. Nice. Beautiful. Sweet. Wow, what a slope. 
playing for birdie. Come Stay on. up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Birdie? Sweet. Yeah, Simon. When the entire round, the entire tournament comes down to one shot, or when, when it comes down to recovering from maybe a couple bad holes or something, how do you show up when the moments, when the pressure is, is at its highest? It's a tough one. Um, Sometimes poorly. <laughs> <laughs> I almost withdraw, like I'm present on the course, but I'm not like thinking too much about anyone around me. Like I'm not acknowledging anyone in the crowd. I'm, Hardly even acknowledging Jordan or nope. sometimes even my card mates, you know, just like really focusing on, on my breath. And um, it's hard to say there's like one moment when you like turn on that focus, like at a big event like Worlds, it's pretty much the whole week. You're like trying to stay as locked into that level of focus as you can. So it's you can't really bring that same focus at every single shot. Right. right. Uh, you have to bring like as much as you can. The whole time. Right. You're trying to conserve and, it, right? And then there's like a moment where you're like, you recognize, obviously, the fourth hole, first round, your putt for 30 feet is just as important as your throw in on the last hole. Mm -hmm. But that fourth, that putt on the fourth hole, the first round, doesn't, doesn't feel, feel as important. You don't feel no. that, right? And you, you can't sustain that level of locked inness. You have to try. You absolutely have to try. Well, we're talking to world champions, so you guys tell me. <laughs> like, um, tell me that, how to do that's it. That's what I. That's what I noticed. That's what I noticed about yeah. about these. Two They're able to do that. too. I mean, at U.S. Women's, it was like every time she stepped up on the tee pad, no matter the difficulty of the shot, she would just pause and she would just look at the line. That level of focus was just there. You could feel it. You could feel her will, like looking at the shot, and it was different than the week before. At, at the tournament before that didn't matter and didn't have the same amount of pressure. You finished a major event in Kona Piste with... It was a world tour back then. World tour. Mm -hmm. Still an elite level event. Down two shots to two players who were playing elite level. And you had to go throw in birdie and you did it. That was nuts. That was amazing. <laughs> I mean, talk, on, talk on that. Like the focus that you felt in that mode, did you feel like you snapped into something there? Or did you feel like you had it all the way through? I mean, was it kind of a situation where you compartmentalized or what? I don't know, I have this weird thing that even if I'm like thinking about something before my shot or while walking up to it, like when I line up my shot, I like stop thinking. Like I just mm. don't think about what disc I'm throwing or what angle I want to release it. I just, like you were saying, the instinct, it just, it just happens because I've been doing it since I'm two years old. It's hard to explain, but it's like the <laughs> best tip to try and give someone is just like don't think. The intuitive, yeah. intuitive mindset. Oh, totally. And mm -hmm. I remember like the first time my my girlfriend came out and watched tournaments. I was like, leading up to it, being like nervous. Oh, she's gonna watch me play. I don't want to fail. But then when I line up my shot, I like don't even remember she's there. It's just, mm. just one thing and just no thoughts. Very cool. That's interesting. In music, as you're saying it. I'm realizing that as I'm playing concerts, not once am I thinking about my technique. Mm -hmm. I'm just playing the song. You know, for us, I think it's a little different because I have a hundred percent focus on a handful of things when I'm on stage. I, I can just prepare for a concert or for a tour or for something that's happening, and if I'm prepared. I'm not nervous. It's just like I just need to go up and, and actually just play. You know, I'm, I'm set to go. There's so much less outside variables, you know? As It's not like a competition. It's not like, okay, if I yeah, do absolutely. good enough, I'm going to yeah, win, and it, it, if not, I'm, I'm going to lose. That's, yeah. That's joining me. Nice. No, that's dude. good. Isn't it way over there? It is to the right, yeah. That's way Come back up. Why is Jerm saying nice? Oh, that's good. It curled. Uh, I'm saying nice because it at least got full flight in the roller. We get to see full it Full roller time. flight? Yeah, I mean, do you, call, you don't really call it roller flight, do you? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that like an roll? oxymoron? I think so. It's not really flying when it's rolling. Oh, yes! 
Oh, so close. That, that turns a little bit. That's going to be crushed. It was yeah. good that you got it like going down. I feel like a, it's a really common mistake to like throw it flat or even a little up on a downhill hole and then it just goes nowhere. But you like match the angle of the hill really well. Cool. Great shot. Wow. What? Dude, Corey. I still found the tree. The one tree. Oh, that was a good <laughs> throw, though. <laughs> That's how it goes. Oh yeah, go, go in. Oh! Corey's just a good try. I had to go for yeah. it. Yeah, that was yeah, awesome. How much what? this, Corey? <laughs> you can tell he's a good yeah, animal. Yeah, he's he throwing so fast. I mean, at That's first awesome. I didn't see that it was online. I just thought you ripped it. Oh, I was like, my God, they can go in the water. <laughs> <laughs> my guy. Oh! Let's go! Oh! Oh! How many eagles have you seen? Two, both of them on this, both on this, on this hole. hole. Oh my gosh. <laughs> nice. That's, sick. Girl. Putt, but That's cool. Oh. oh, same time. Ah, oh, she Paige wins Sorry, the battle Jerm. putt. Good job, Paige. I got battle you. round. I got you. <laughs> You're like closer. <laughs> and better. <laughs> oh, there it is. Nice. I didn't, I didn't mention the better part at first. Your second putt is like <laughs> world class, dude. Yeah, that was so good. Oh gosh, I got a branch in the way. I've been practicing the shot all morning. Heads up, Alyssa. Oh, oh, full send? Oh, oh air, air bounce. bounce. Oh, dang. One more try. I like that. Sick. Hold on, oh, how do you do that? It. From here. <laughs> it's a thumb technique where you release this from bring it down and then push with the thumb onto the flight plate and then the nose goes up and it like air bounces. It's very difficult Sick. with a disc golf disc. It's a lot easier with the Yeah, like you the can practice frisbee. with a frisbee. That's much easier yeah. and then you get the feel for it. Who else? Who else can play the guitar? James. Just a little. Come on, James. Let's see what you got. Uh-oh. Switch it up. Do you need a pick? I'm kind of like Simon. I, they fall out of my hand. Do your power grip. Power grip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> you're the guy that can fully commit, though, right? Uh -huh. So whatever you're going to do, just commit to just it. Just commit. <laughs> this is my favorite little thing I know at all. It's... Sports and music, it's like the same thing. Like it is. It's muscle memory, but also just the deep confidence. Like you're not scared to play a wrong note, and even if you would play, play a wrong note, we wouldn't notice most of the time, mm -hmm. or it wouldn't startle you. But I, I relate to James here that if I play a wrong note, it like would be like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> but on the course, if we make a mistake, like it, it won't rattle us really, or it's just like the deep confidence where we're like, like if we make a mistake, we know on the course. Whereas somebody else, a spectator, might not be able to see that we missed our line or that yeah, our timing was wrong. Great shot! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I missed it so bad. I get so confused by it. I'm like, if you knew what was going on in my head right now, yeah. you wouldn't be clapping. You'd come over and give me a hug. Yeah. Yeah. That, so, did you feel that at all today on hole one, maybe, or any other time? The first shot, I was like, frick. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good start. It wasn't even that bad. Like, it you really clipped the it. tree branch and then it went nose up. Yeah, but, you know, it's, there's nerves. He's making fun of my disc the second I pulled it out. <laughs> Come on, man. That's just me, Corey. That's just me, dude. At the same time, I've got nothing to prove on the course. There's no chance that I'm going to compete with any of you. There's no chance that I'm going to, that, that, I, that I should even remotely get in the headspace of comparing myself. Like the amount of hours that you've all put into this, the dedication of your entire lives to this, I have nothing to prove. I think in a similar way, you could probably relieve some of that pressure from yourself on the guitar, where it's like, well, these get, everybody did kind of set you up. It's like, oh, Simon can play the guitar. So now, I know. Now I was, <laughs> but I think, you know, playing guitar, it's like, I don't know. You got nothing to prove. It's like, yeah, this is a song that I 
you know, this, this mm -hmm. is the most fun for me to play. Yeah, oh, exactly. Cool. Yeah. But uh, and I understand that, but it's funny that the body's just working a certain way and like yeah, yeah. you're like uh Yeah, you don't know when you're like, gonna get nervous, you're just all of a sudden you're nervous. <laughs> and you're like, What? Yeah. What's up, uh -huh. When in your career did you play with Satriani? Um, I met Joe Joe and I have never met in person. Thousand. We've just hung out on the internet with each really? other. And 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 um, produce some music together? Yeah. So he was my first interview for my podcast. I have a oh, guitar sweet. podcast. Yeah. And I interviewed him and he was saying, oh, you know, I love your rhythm guitar. You're incredible at what you do. Let's do something <sighs> together sometime. Sometimes people will, will just say that and they're yeah. kind of bluffing like, oh yeah, let's, let's get together and play Bluff. sometimes. Like, all right. So I thought he was bluffing. I'm like, all right, screw it. If Satriani's saying he wants to do something, I'm in it. I'm gonna call him the up. next yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I literally emailed him two days later and was just like, "Hey, you know, you said you'd want to do something. I have this track that really could use some lead guitar." He emailed me right back. He's just like, "Oh my gosh, I love this. Yeah, I'll send you some options." And less just than laid a week, it down? yeah, he just wow. laid it down oh, and slayed it on this too. He's like, "Is it cool? Like, do you like it?" I'm like, "Yes, it's cool. It's amazing." What track was that? It's a song called Massive. Massive. That that's what makes golf like one of the great challenges in a sport is because each each shot you are you have to reach that moment where you're like you have to let go of how to do it and just look at your target and do it whereas like in basketball you catch a shot and you don't have time to think about it it's like okay Nate it's your turn to make this putt you know, you got 30 and have seconds. all that time, <laughs> you got all that time to think about, okay, and like, I'm still trying to overcome it, but I definitely find myself in the analytical mindset a lot of the time where I'm like, okay, like, get down on your back weight and shift your weight and, and release it, you know, release mm. it at the target. Whereas like a lot of my competitors, I notice that they're not thinking about how to do it. They're just like letting it happen. See, I actually feel the opposite where I feel maybe my fight or flight response, at least in something that I know that I can do, I actually play way better under pressure. Like even here, I'm like, ah, there's, yeah, there's a little bit of pressure, but I'm like, ah. I think the best of the best do. Yeah, the best, though. Paige plays way better if there's pressure. If no, one's wa if no one's when watching her, when I it's like. <laughs> every week, my first round of the tournament, every weekend, I'm like, I'm gonna get last place because I just practice so bad. I'm just like shanking everywhere and yeah. then like as the weekend goes on, I get more comfortable. When more but spectators are there. More, more people show up, you, you change your I know, I know time. because of that, because yeah. of that. And the spe and it's like, almost like it, we are performing. Like they literally came here yeah. to see you throw. That's the pressure I'm yeah. feeling. And it's like, t I, I love that actually. And like, I enjoy it. And I think I do well under it. Yeah. Most of the time. <laughs> You hear that? Stratocaster. I don't even know how many royalties you get from one sale, but I'm gonna buy one if you get a hole in one right now. Percent. I'm gonna buy one. What is it in the disc golf world? You hear that? You don't have to. Depends on the company. It. Well, in the music world. Percentage wise, I don't know, but we're definitely not getting a percent of 2,000 for one sale. That's oh, for sure. Well, uh, factory cost. <laughs> okay. It depends on the manufacturer on that one. Yeah. Now, see, everybody's on different companies. They're like, what are you making? Yeah, well, hold on a second. James hold is on. like, hold yeah. on, hold on. What percentage do you get? Nobody wants to talk. I get it. All right. <laughs> All right. Juiced it. All right, Jules, we can still have a wedding. Okay, great. <laughs> Trust Adam Hammes thing. What is he? Was this? Is it that foot that stomps? It's his left foot, I think. Is his left foot that stomps? Left foot, left stomp. Yeah. Oh, it worked. No. It's in. Oh, off the top. Off the top. The stomp. Oh my gosh. There's to something to it. it. There's something to it. I've never felt nervous doing commentary. I know that hundreds of thousands of people are watching. What if it, is but it live I'm, different though? No, I didn't, I did live in, uh, for the DDO this year. Didn't feel nerves at all. I felt like I was in my element, felt very natural. Wasn't worried about saying something dumb because I inevitably do that every round. Still crack jokes. Yeah, I'm still going to crack something dumb that uh, most people are going to find cringy. And that's that just, stuff was nervous for me. That's, that's just my nervous. brand. That's all right. I get going it. Going to interview. 
You did good though. Your I did the live. I did the live broadcast this past weekend, and it was so, so nerve wracking. Like going to interview Eagle right after he. That's won. different. That's one on one stuff. You know, and it's like every there's like a thousand people all around you, and then you're like, don't say some dead end question or something that is just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, Nate, what <laughs> you know, but. You did a good job. It, it felt good. It you felt did a good great. job with it. Yeah. Like, I still, like, get that nerve of, like, the nerves of, like, man, I love this. I still get excitement playing in front of people. But, like, if I throw, I feel, like, nervous if I throw a bad shot in front of, like, 75 spectators. Yeah. But talking and saying a really, really bad joke in front of a hun hundreds of thousands of people doesn't bring me any nerves. Like, I don't know why <laughs> that happens or what that is, but... That's yeah. just where like this is a transition into it. Yeah, and I just I'm really naturally bad <laughs> at telling jokes. Like with Wolfpack, what we do in the studio is we're all in one room and we record everything live together, nice. and that's unique to to the modern era because actually we've never even worn headphones. Oh wow! Most of the time you have headphones. It's like oh yeah, I need a little more of this. Or oh, yeah, give me a little more guitar so I really whatever. Or, give me some more drums to be really comfortable. Most of the time when we're recording. We're actually fairly uncomfortable as far as sound wise. Everybody's just kind of monitoring enough to hear themselves and, and make sure like I can kind of hear everybody else. What's kind of cool and sometimes uh, frustrating is that the mistakes will just stay if there is little mistakes. I, I can listen back to every Wolfpack album and think, mm, messed up here. Gosh, I just <laughs> wish we would have done one more take. But at the same time, nobody's gonna. No. Yeah. Nobody's, I mean, yeah, you could probably look at me, oh, yeah, I, I guess you could have sustained that note for an extra eighth note, but nobody cares other than me. Yeah. But <laughs> well, it's, all, all, and artists, their paintings are never, ever complete. Sure. They're never complete. Like, a, a great artist will look at their paintings and, like, they'll put them out because they eventually have to sell yeah. them. Yeah. If they want to be able to live, yeah. they have to get rid of them, but, like, that's what most artists will say is that they're never really done. All right, so I'm gonna say three, two, one, putt. Don't putt until I say putt, but you have to release it then. If you release it early or late, DQ. I'm sending you out of here, Corey. You hear me? I want that passion. I know you do. All right, three, two, one, putt. Oh! oh. And, are you serious? I knocked oh, yours in. in. Let's you go, Nate. <laughs> Let's go, bro. Oh! All right, All right you so you gotta do it you. again, though. You gotta back it up. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, hit me, hit me. All right, give yourself a little more room. Nate's a great putter. Yeah, there you oh, go. Nah. Yeah, there, that's, that's good. Like last All right, three, two, years. one, putt. Yeah. Let's go! Oh! Yeah. Wow! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Let's go, dude. Let's Corey. Did that go any better? Oh, my gosh, oh, dude. My we, did gosh. Not, we did not change that, dude. You just won. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, everybody's got an instrument. Here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna try to jam something together. The entire pinnacle of this is going to be when Alyssa comes in on the flute. Yes. <laughs> You're our glue. Okay, okay. So we're gonna play one measure of C, one measure of A minor. We're gonna set you up to solo in the key of C. Wait, I'm soloing? Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, just think about it. You're gonna have a minute to think. We're gonna go around in a circle and I'll kind of instruct everybody to go. All right, okay. Germs start us off. All right, Simon, come on in. JC knows what's up. Going. Hey, just bringing the marching band vibe. Hey, give us a backbeat. One, that two, three, four. Two. No, just hit on two and four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there you go. the 
happy. That also works. All right, Alyssa, you ready? I can tell when you started listening more intently because you just started slowing down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That was great. All right, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us. This is really fun. I hope it's the first of many times that we hang together, play music, and disc golf together. We'll see you next time. Two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs>